Welcome to the Paul Street Journal, a production of St. Paul Inside the Walls. The Paul Street Journal is a show all about Catholic economics, from discussing the economic principles laid out in scripture to answering the economic questions that come up in our daily lives. This show will be your guide to making your own economic decisions with the heart of the church. I'm Freddie Garcia, and I'm joined by my co-host, Brian Hansberger. I just want to give another warm welcome to episode number one of the Paul Street Journal. Wherever you may be listening, I hope you're as excited as I am to, to go through this. The Paul Street Journal sounds super exciting to me. Um, and like you heard in the intro beforehand, it's going to be a show about Catholicism. It's going to be a show about economics and essentially how those two things intersect. We're going to cover a lot of material um, and most of all, we just hope that it's as engaging as we expect it to be and as you need it to be. Um, so I'll pass it over to Brian to explain what exactly St. Paul Inside the Walls is as this show is produced by St. Paul Inside the Walls. So Brian, take it away. Thanks, Freddie. And uh, welcome listeners and viewers of, of the Paul Street Journal. So St. Paul Inside the Walls is the Catholic Center for Evangelization for the Diocese of Patterson which is in northern New Jersey. So our bishop is Bishop Kevin Sweeney, and we operate under his direction and the direction of our vicar for evangelization, Father Paul Manning. So uh, St. Paul Inside the Walls, is, is it might be the most exciting place on the planet. I hope I'm not exaggerating. <laughs> but uh, our, our mission here, our goal is, uh, is multifold. One is to evangelize and reach out to people with no faith at all uh so so engaging the general public uh, uh specifically we're good at, at dealing with young adults in this way uh, college students perhaps but uh inviting them to explore or or more deeply explore their life of faith we uh also act as a, a center for training in evangelization so we have uh, different sorts of events that uh, help people articulate their faith to others. And then finally, we operate as uh, an as, as a office of evangelization for our diocese. So we have many departments here, a staff of about 20 people who do uh, marriage preparation, catechesis, and youth ministry, and things like that. Mm -hmm. Nice. And who are we? Why are we the ones making the podcast? I'll start with you. Who are you, Brian? Okay, well... Uh, as you mentioned, my name is, is Brian Hansberger, and I serve as the executive director here at St. Paul Inside the Walls. I also serve as the diocesan director of mission and technology integration. And then finally, I am a professor of uh, uh, theology and biblical studies and evangelization courses at the Immaculate Conception Seminary School of Theology at Seton Hall University. So one of the things that I do is it there is, it, uh, I'm the administrator of, of a certificate program. It's a master's level training program in, in evangelization. Got it. If you don't mind me asking, how long have you been here at St. Paul's? I, I, and I, also I, just to know, we call it St. Paul's a lot of the time because it's easier than saying St. Paul inside the walls. Yeah, St. Paul inside the walls is a mouthful. Yeah. Um, I don't know how long I've been here, okay. over 10 years. Okay, nice. Awesome. Yeah. Um, so I'll introduce myself. My name is Freddie Garcia. I have only been at St. Paul's for about two months now, but it's felt like longer. Um, so my official position is the Associate Coordinator of Evangelization, and I'm also the Campus Minister for two universities that are very close by to St. Paul's. One of them is Drew University, and the other is Fairleigh Dickinson University, the Florham Campus. Which I'm looking at out the window yeah, right now. Yeah, they're, they're unbelievably close, both in walking distance and... Um, I'm excited not only to be at St. Paul's, but also to be at both of those universities. Um, and like I said, I've not been here so, too long, so very excited for what's to come, not only in St. Paul's, but also in this podcast. So now to get a little bit closer to the content of the podcast, I mentioned we're talking about economics and we're talking about Catholicism. So what exactly are we going to be talking about as economics? What is economics? So uh, economics, it, it, it's, a, it's an English word that we're all familiar with, but the word is uh, an ancient Greek word, and it's used in, uh, in, in the time of Jesus and St. Paul. And, and uh, in Greek, it's oikonomia, 
uh, oikos, the root word means house. And oikonomia would be like the way of the house. Is, so isn't oikos a yogurt? It's a yogurt as well. Yeah. Okay. But it means house. Okay. Like house yogurt, like plain yogurt, in other words. Uh, okay. Uh, so the, the oikonomia in the ancient sense is, is the way of, uh, of the house. So every house had a rhythm uh, and an economy. You know, resources were coming in, resources were produced, or resources were used to produce something, and then goods were being uh, uh, sold. And, uh, and, you know, there was a financial uh, component to every house. So eventually that term was used uh, at a macro level when it talked when it, when we're talking about a nation you know like like a GDP like mm-hmm. out the input inputs and outputs of of a of a nation's economy so and then finally there's a theological understanding of economy which refers to like the divine economy would be God's dealings with humanity the the way of God's uh, communication and uh, and and uh, life with humanity. Got it. Sorry to be nitpicky, but mm-hmm. how would you give a one to two sentence definition then of economics? Because that spiel was great <laughs> and informative, but what is the two sentence definition that you would give? Sorry to put you on the spot, but I'm sure you can give something. Yeah, I, I would have to say um, uh, the, 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 uh, the flow of resources the flow of resources uh, in, in a certain like body of society, whether that's at a micro level or a macro level, but the flow of resources. Okay, yeah. got it. So then why should Catholics, us Catholics, care about economics, the flow of resources, mm. whether micro or macro level? What makes it relevant to the people that are listening and to Catholics at large? So, so uh, the church has much to say about economics, and it's it's. We're going to talk about this later, but there, there's a lot uh, of of wisdom that the church has to share on this subject that is unknown, but it's beneficial. So, so just as a personal example, I was unaware as as somebody who studied economics in school. Uh, once I became aware of Catholic social teaching on economics, uh, studying theology. I, I became a little upset with my my economics training uh, because there there's so much the church has to offer that's that's it's not well known, but it has the ability to affect your life as an individual, and it has the ability to affect society uh, because it's it's beautiful, uh, and it has it has the ability to uh, improve both individual and communi- uh, individual lives and the communal life. Okay, I want to give a response. I think as a as a Catholic, and I, I'm a young Catholic, I guess. I'm 22 years of age. And sometimes when I think about economics, at least in the past, I've always thought mainly about markets, trends, and, and you know, technical words that I would have heard in college from economics majors. Mm-hmm. So to some extent, it feels like I cannot really worry about that macro level stuff and I could just focus on my own life and and economics honestly to me didn't really seem super relevant but you're t- you're making it sound like it is um so how would you tell me a 22 year old who's like you know what economics i can live my life without it what would you respond to me in that, to I that would, question i would say that uh uh economics at a macro level affects everybody and uh uh you can't just put your you can't bury your head in the sand. Uh, every every act, whether it's an economic act or something else, is a, is a moral act in in one sense. It's it's as if you had a pebble and you were to throw that pebble uh, into a lake. It's going to have ripples that expand. And uh, as Catholics, it's our role to be aware that every every stone you throw into the pond every dollar that you spend has an effect mm-hmm. on everybody else so uh uh we as catholics care about other people we find uh, others to be just as dignified as us and and we care about them so every act that we make in the economy uh should be done with in- intentionality mm-hmm. uh with discernment got it so you mentioned earlier that 
the Catholic Church has a lot to say about economics. Um, and given that our podcast is about Catholicism and economics and the Catholic social teaching on economics, how do we get there? How, how are our listeners, how, what, how can our listeners understand the Catholic social teaching on economics? What's behind it? Well, the Catholic social teaching on economics starts with our, our, our scriptures. So we have the, the uh, Hebrew Bible, the Old Testament. We have the New Testament. Uh, so, so those are our foundational uh, uh, documents and uh, filled with wisdom and uh, both, both principled advice and also very practical advice. Uh, going from there, we then have uh, all sorts of examples of Catholic history, how the economy changed through the history of, of Catholicism uh, from one century and millennia to another. Mm. And then, starting in the late 1800s, we get very formal, clear teachings on economics from uh, the leaders of the church, the popes. So, starting in 1891 with uh, a special encyclical titled Rerum Novarum, uh, and then many others since, all the way up until uh, Pope Francis talking about economics today, uh, there, there's a, a very clear teaching. So about 140 years worth of uh, teaching that we in this podcast have to unpack. Yeah, there's a lot to unpack yeah. if we're going back to the Old Testament, right? Yes. Um, and, and you mentioned these relevant events. And I, it sounds like for for not only the Old Testament, the new, but the New Testament, the encyclicals, and all mm -hmm. that comes after, there's a lot of context. Context in which... Um, it, it'll help us better understand these principles that you mentioned, these principles that are in the Old Testament, the New Testament, and even the encyclicals. I think mm. that um, in order to understand those, we need the context. And I think that that's something like you mentioned, we want to cover. And um, and I think we we hope that we can cover it in a way that's really easily digestible um, and entertaining, right? Sure, yeah, yeah. I, I, I hope that it's entertaining. I think that it'll, it'll be entertaining... Uh, depending on, on uh, your own interests uh, yeah. as, as a, a listener or as a viewer. Uh, but but the, the subject matter will certainly be interested interesting to anybody who, who uh, is a, finds that intersection of Catholicism and economics. If they find that interesting, they'll find this podcast interesting. Yeah, got it. But also, on top of that, you said... I, I posed the question, you know, me as a 22-year-old, I felt like I could cast economics aside. Mm -hmm. But we don't want that. We want to make it clear that that's, you know, I guess you can do that, but that's not what the Catholic position is. You want to to make economic acts part of your Catholic understanding. Ag agreed. So so um, in, in while we were preparing this podcast, I did talk to people who have uh, master's degrees in theology, uh, some priests even. Th this subject matter does not come up in most uh, formal educations, even for, for priests. So uh, this is kind of like off the radar, but it, it does have the, uh, uh, it, it's very important and it does have the ability to change people's lives for the better. So, mm -hmm. so if you're not interested in the subject matter, perhaps you should be. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> and I think that, I think that the economy seems like, or economics or the economy, those all sound like, um, kind of red hot words that, that you know are really mm. intertwined with you know the political climate of the United States and the world. Um, so it's something people talk about, but maybe not in the context of its role in Catholic social teaching. Um, so I think that we can you know appeal to those listeners too. This should be interesting, right? If if it's such a such a red hot topic, you know this should be you know kind of that cooling of the red hot topic, helping us understand. You know, well, it, we could we could cool that topic or heat it up. I don't know, <laughs> but uh, you know, I I, I think uh, the research has been done, and and uh, Americans for the for the last couple of decades have been voting primarily on economic issues. Mm -hmm. Like there's there's all these cultural war battles on on um, on other subjects, but uh, fairly in the in the in in, a, in the somewhat recent history. Uh, it's people are voting primarily on economic decisions and uh, a, a large percentage of voters in the United States are Catholics. Yeah. And uh, oftentimes they, they may be unaware of what even the church's guidance is on such subjects. Yeah. And I mean, I have to say, I 
felt like I was too before even coming to St. Paul's. I have a political science background mm -hmm. um, and I uh, a deep interest in, in Catholic, social, Catholic social teaching and theology, but I think in terms of the Catholic social teaching on economics, I was pretty ignorant, I would say. Like, I just wasn't familiar with with all the things that you're describing that we have, the principles of the of scripture and, and the teachings that come from popes. Um, and yeah, I, I felt pretty strongly that that was the case until I came to St. Paul's. Well, uh, join the club. <laughs> so, so as I mentioned briefly before, I studied finance and economics in, uh, as, as an undergraduate. And uh, my economics professors, they started in 1776 with... Adam Smith and uh, his his essay on the wealth of nations. So, uh, as as a, a young man, like who was I to question the professor? I was there to learn, right? Not to question. Yeah. So, uh, so there there was uh, capitalism, and then socialism, and then you, as a young person, had to choose which one is yours. Yeah, it's as it, it it's it's uh, insultingly oversimplified. And it just assumes that the world starts turning in 1776. Yeah, I mean, I, I think that, I think that there's. It feels also like there's a disconnect uh, in people my age or my parents' age. Um, <clears throat> my parents being immigrants from Colombia and Ecuador, and me being the first to be born and raised here in my family. Um, it feels like there's this big disconnect from not only the church's position, but like where it comes from, the history and understanding the context that I mentioned before. Mm -hmm. um, but I'm, I'm glad that it's something that I'm learning now and that it's something that we hope to also put out there with this podcast. Yes, it, it'll take uh, many, many episodes to unpack the, the, the wisdom and uh, the, the, uh, uh, it, it's just such a rich topic yeah uh, it's rich but we also want to make it digestible so i think there's perhaps certain people listening that have uh maybe aren't so interested in the entirety of of catholic social teaching on economics but they have relevant questions mm. about you know maybe their financial life um, and maybe they're practicing catholics who maybe just are a bit curious about what the best way to spend their money is or save their money um do you th maybe have any any I guess something that we could maybe talk about from my own experience, it is now 2023, 2020, 2020, we had the COVID pandemic and there was, as many people know, lockdowns and a lot, I think something that I noticed a lot of was local businesses, mom and pop shops, whether they're restaurants or, or little corner stores and convenience stores were kind of shutting down because they just didn't have the, the stability that some, you know, big corporations had. And I think that a lot of the people that I followed on social media, be it Instagram or Twitter, were kind of really sending this message that, oh, we should buy local. We should really support these mom and pop shop because they don't have anything but us to, to, to support them. We're their customers. They don't really have customers from anywhere else. Um, and I, th I thought it was heartwarming. And this was before, again, I had any really strong position about economics and Catholicism, but it was, uh, I th it felt like a good response. And I'm wondering now if, if the Catholic Church has a, a, a position on that kind of response, buying local and uh, supporting those that are in our own community. Yeah, so uh, I, I think that's a great example uh, 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 of, of where Catholic social teaching could, could uh, affect the way that we think, the way that we spend money. And uh, one thing that, that we're going to kind of, uh, there, there's some nuances here. Maybe the church doesn't take a position on such a matter, but it does have principles that guide every individual in how to act. Mm -hmm. So we're going to be focusing on those principles and then seeing how they weigh against one another, right? So uh, is the church against corporations? No. Uh, uh, it, uh, does the church desire uh, the good of small businesses? Yes. Uh, and and when it comes to the, this, uh, there's sometimes one needs to be favored over another, right? Mm -hmm. So in this podcast, we're going to talk about uh, perhaps in certain circumstances where one would be favorable over the other and why. Yeah, I see. Okay. And I think connected to that, um, most of, of at that time during the pandemic and me growing in my own understanding of, of what was going on and of economics, 
um, to me, it maybe still feels like when I think about economics, I think about money and I mm-hmm. think about um, money as it relates to me. How am I going to purchase things? Where, where am I finding my financial stability? Um, and I, th- I think many people now in America and throughout the world are concerned with the same thing. How am I going to provide for my family? How am I going to provide for myself? Finances and stuff. Um, so I guess, you know, I'll, I'll bring it this way. Me being a 22 year old, you know, I have plans for the future. I want to get married. I want to have a house. Um, but you know, life, you know, it it costs money essentially is where I'm going. Mm -hmm. Um, so I'm wondering if let's say, for example, an index fund is a way of, you know, I could invest my money so that I can have more money in the future to buy these things that I, I hope to buy or hope to have. Um, so because when I think about money, I think about economics, do you have an answer to that? Does the church have an answer to these kinds of questions that people may be concerned about? Uh, yeah, so, so there's, we're going to talk about like the, the principles that, that guide us in future episodes, but uh, even it, with an index fund, there's uh, multiple principles of Catholic social teaching at play, right? So uh, one of the principles we're going to discuss is, uh, is, is your obligation as a Catholic to take care of your family. Uh, the scripture in the New Testament says, a person who doesn't take care of their own family is worse than a non-believer. Wow. All right, so that's one one side of the of the coin to, to consider. Uh, also, we're going to talk about the importance of discerning economic decisions. Mm. Right. So, is an index fund a discerning vehicle in, of investment? No. In fact, that's why they exist is because they're undiscerning. Mm. Right. So, what's more important, saving? Uh, discerning, you know, these are two principles that both matter, that uh, uh, an individual who's informed by Catholic social teaching is going to have to uh, weigh these things and, and come to a conclusion. Mm. And and by the way, there's many more principles that they'll be thinking of when they make these decisions. Yeah, I'm sure there are. Too. Yeah, okay, got it. Um, but yeah, I, I think that um, there, for me, at least, when I think about economics or, or the, the church's position, I, re- I, I, as a Catholic, want to take, be informed by the church's position, want to, want to listen to the teachings of the popes and what's laid out in Scripture. Um, and I, I'm sure other Catholics do as well. And, and I think in doing so, I tend to look a lot for advice, whether that's from you know my local parish priests here at St. Paul's or where I mean even online I think online there's tons of people that just look for financial advice mm-hmm. and sometimes even informed by you know their their faith tradition uh one thing that I think of is actually um I'm sure you're familiar and our listeners may be too uh with Dave Ramsey who who is uh he's on YouTube he's on a bunch of platforms and when he gives his financial advice you know he makes people um he really stresses the idea of, of, of you know, say becoming a millionaire sometimes he talks about all the time. And he says, you know, he, he seems to be a, a, a faithful Christian himself. He's not Catholic, but he does tend to quote scripture a lot and thank God for, for everything that he has. Um, and I'm wondering if, you know, should we listen to people like Dave Ramsey? <laughs> sure. Yeah, I think I think we could listen to Dave Ramsey. Uh, so so uh, I, I've listened to... Uh, you know a few of the things that he's produced and 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 pr- maybe have uh, maybe I've read one of his books but um uh yeah he so so uh he is a good uh christian man from what i what i experienced and um and he he uh is influenced by christianity in general uh but but um as a non-catholic there's there's some differences and uh catholicism has a very uh uh uh, well organized and well documented uh, set of teachings on uh, you know Catholic social teaching on economics, and I'm not aware of Dave Ramsey's awareness of that. There, there's things that I've heard him say or have read him uh, in in his books uh, uh, that that are, are um, in conflict with what the Church has to say about economics. So, 
Um, I think it's. I think he's good to listen to, but uh, you know, as a Catholic, I would do so with a grain of salt, and and be aware that the, the Catholic Church has a different way of seeing some of these things. You know, we interpret the scriptures differently than than non Catholics sometimes, uh, and we even have a different set of Old Testament scriptures. Mm-hmm. You know, all the New Testament economic practices of the Christians they come from the Old Testament. Old Testament is filled with dozens of economic laws, all of which lay out priorities that Jesus and Christians just assume, right? So if we interpret the Bible differently, if we have a different set of books, uh, the, the end result is going to be different. Got it. I see. Um, I, I personally am a, a sucker for practical advice, so I'm asking all these little practical questions. Do we listen to this person? Should we do this? Um, <laughs> but I think they help. I think they help understand these big picture macro principles and themes. Um, but on the note of practical advice, I feel like St. Paul's has some practical advice to give in regard to purchasing uh, from a, a Catholic perspective. So for example, I learned earlier, and that way I'm going to point to our studio. Sorry for all those who are uh, listening and not watching the podcast. This table itself is it Facebook Marketplace where you got it from? Is that correct? Yes. So I suppose, I mean, with, without uh, advertising this even like to our staff, you know, uh, one of the preferences uh, is, is to have very old, well-made, uh, high-quality mm. things, right? So, uh, so yeah, this table... Uh, it was, it, it's, it's very old and we, we, we bought it used. It's, it's in my opinion, better than what we would have gotten, uh, from, from, uh, you know, a big store, mm. uh, brand new. Nice. And also just to keep it on the theme of the studio, uh, I, I just want to point out to the audience what we have back here. Cause we have, I think a very beautiful setup. Um, so would you enlighten the audience on what we have? Yeah, we have, a, we have a, a Latin summa, which, uh, which is, uh, you know, what. uh, St. Thomas Aquinas, uh, in, in the uh, 13th century, he uh, thought that this was an introduction to theology. So uh, it's quite a long introduction. Yeah, it looks tell. dense. Yeah, but uh, uh, Thomas has a lot of guidance on this subject matter, and Catholic social teaching is, is um, somewhat guided by what Thomas has to say. So uh, welcome uh, to the podcast, Thomas. Yes, absolutely. And uh, yeah, the, even the... the, the uh, uh, these, these book holders are heirlooms of the diocese. Uh, they used to uh, be in one of our past bishop's libraries. Nice. Yeah. Nice. Keeping, so. the, keeping the old high quality. Yeah, and there's, they're seen on. now probably by more people than ever. So, yeah. uh, so it's, it's good. Yeah, that's yeah. awesome. Even this TV is, is, uh, is from my house. Yeah. Uh, my, my wife didn't like it anymore, so now it's here. <laughs> <laughs> nice. So we're, we're keeping that, you know, keeping the, the, local, the local stuff for sure, uh, in, in our studio. Um, but okay, I talked about practical advice and I gave a little highlight to our studio, which I'm glad I did. Um, but there's also some people that really love big picture macro level questions and themes about not only economics, but Catholicism. Um, and what bigger picture person for Catholics today than Pope Francis? Some people talk about Pope Francis. Um, I think he has some avid supporters. There's some people that, you know, kind of criticize Pope Francis very frequently. So I think a lot of, especially North Americans, like to put uh, Pope Francis in a spectrum that Pope Francis doesn't even recognize. Mm. So the, the spectrum being like the capitalist on one side and the socialist on the other. And if Pope Francis is criticizing capitalism, then he must be a socialist, a socialist right? But Pope Francis, you can't put him in that box. Catholic social teaching is not within the spectrum of that capitalism and socialism construct. Uh, So capitalism is invented in in the way that we know it, in the way that it's expressed with the invisible hand, right? Mm -hmm. Like that kind of capitalism uh, was was made by Adam Smith in 1776. Now, elements of the free market obviously pre-exist that, and socialism comes with Karl Marx in the in the 19th century. So, uh, those are very new things. Catholicism is way older yeah, than much, those much things, older. right? So, the church has a bigger uh, perspective, and the the church's teaching on economics sits outside of the spectrum of capitalism and socialism. 
And and honestly, the Catholic teaching on economics is much more practical. Mm. So uh, capitalism, capitalism and socialism are less economic systems and more ideologies or philosophies. So, and they're exaggerations. So one will say things like something outlandish, like uh, no government intervention in the economy. And the other will say total government control yeah. of the economy. And, and we know deep down that neither of those things are possible. Uh, at, at some level, uh, there, there's got to be balance. So some, some will say, okay, well, then Catholicism is somewhere in the middle, right? It's, it's like this moderate perspective on capitalism and socialism. And that's not the case. It sits, it sits outside of the spectrum entirely. So if you see only within the spectrum of capitalism and socialism, as many Americans do, understanding Pope Francis is impossible. So, and there's no quick answer to this, right? This is why it's a blind spot among the Catholic population, especially in the United States, is because the first step to understanding Catholic social teaching on economics is to leave the capitalism and socialism spectrum. Mm. That's a big shift. It sounds like there's a lot in order to do that. We need to learn a lot and, and kind of agree on, on different things that are not within that, that spectrum. Mm -hmm. um, and even though that information is a lot and it's a lot to cover, we're going to cover it. We're going to get there. Um, and hopefully in a very entertaining way, this show, like I said before, I'm completely and utterly excited about what's to come. And I hope that the audience is too. And, and, oh, and, and I'll give a bit of a layout of how we're going to do that. So you can, um, you know, decide whether or not you're going to stick around, but next episode is going to be, uh, us covering the Old Testament and the principles that are laid out in the Old Testament. You mentioned yourself that this starts somewhere and it starts in scripture. So that's what next ep episode is going to be about. The episode after that, episode three, is going to be on the New Testament and the fulfillment of those principles and what's, what's new about the New Testament in regard to economics. And then after that, we're also, the rest isn't necessarily chronological, but we will be going over the, the chronology. We're going to be going over historical events that are relevant, um, the context, as I mentioned before, to all of these principles and the teachings of the church. And we're finally, like you said, going to get to encyclicals, the authoritative teachings from the popes on Catholic social teaching on economics. And also we're hoping that, as we've mentioned throughout the podcast, we're going to get to contemporary events. We're going to get to things that answer the questions that we have in our everyday lives, as our intro says. Um, and, and yeah, we're hoping that it's consumable to everyone who may be interested for whatever reason it may be. Um, so that essentially wraps up episode one. We really hope you stick around. Make sure to keep an eye out for the next episode of the Paul Street Journal. In order to stay on top of new releases, make sure you follow or subscribe wherever you're listening. And if you're on YouTube, please do drop a like and hit the bell for notifications. While you're at it, make sure to check out the other shows produced by the diocese. Those shows are Beyond the Beacon, hosted by Bishop Kevin Sweeney and Jay Agnish, and Coffee with Cupkey, hosted by Monsignor Raymond Cupkey and Father Paul Manning. Do you have anything else to add, Brian? Uh, our producers. Our producers, you're right. I want to give a special thanks to Joe Genexi and Caitlin Ferrari, the production team that make this show possible. And with all that said, I just want to thank you all for listening to the Paul Street Journal. See you next time.